Oh, I was one of those ones, and then it was November 1st. That's not a joke. I'm really worried about this. Uh Uh-huh. This girl at the club took me into the bathroom, and she did something to me. Back in my club days, we used to call that a favor. Oh, caller, could you hold on? I've got Frankenstein on the line. Frankenstein, something you want to add to this conversation? I see. Your rebuttal, caller. I'm not lying. It happened to me. It could happen to anyone. Fire! Fire! Ooh, good point. You want some advice? Wash off the eyeliner, put on something that's not black, and go get a tan at the beach. Jeez, the Deb of Night Show does not endorse the goth lifestyle, and take it from Deb, pretending you're a vampire only impresses people with similar physical ickiness. Next caller. Deb, I think the world's been messed up, is messed up, and will continue to be messed up. Oh, an optimist. Now, bear with me, but I know what the cause of all the world's problems is. Nipples on TV? Exactly. Nudity? Not too much nudity. Not enough nudity. Clothes make a person dishonest. They're hiding their true selves away under them. Clothes promote problems like class and sense of piety and concealed weapons. Why, how much do you think we spend on clothes as a people? What if that money were going towards science? Why, we'd be living in a futuristic techno world by now. Have you ever been to a nudist colony? Not attractive. The fact that you think it should be is a side effect of the prurient media. You're not desensitized to nudity. Just think, if the man at the movie concession wasn't wearing his pants today, you'd storm out of the theater in a tizzy. But in a nude world, it'd be popcorn and a medium soda, please. No, I think what would happen is I'd lose my appetite. And isn't obesity one of our nation's biggest problems? Another benefit of nudity. And what about all the hullabaloo that people make when a person walks around the way Mother Nature made him on a brisk spring afternoon? Arrested for public indecency? Why, in a nude world, it'd be commonplace. Folks would ask you, how many people did you expose yourself to today? As proud as I am of my girls, I think I'm going to limit them to private appearances. Next caller. Yeah, this is it. This time I've stumbled across something that's bigger than anything you could possibly imagine. A threat to the entire human race's existence. Ah, Gomez. You know, it's been a bad night when I've been looking forward to your call. Deb, nothing could prepare the world for this. This is the biggest story in the history of humanity ever. Ever, Deb. How I found this out, I can't say, but I'm risking my life to tell the world this. Are you prepared for this? Sure. People of Los Angeles, vampires walk among us. Ugh, not vampires again. Hear me out, Deb. Vampires are among us and have been since the dawn of time. In Los Angeles, well, there's more vampires per person here than anywhere else in the world. People are killed by vampires all the time, but their secret vampire society covers it up. Who blew up that warehouse in Santa Monica? Vampires. What happened to the crew of the Elizabeth Dane? Vampires. Want to know what happened to that sarcophagus that disappeared? Vampires took it. The Prince of Vampires, to be more specific. He wants to use it against a league of other vampires that have been trying to get a foothold in our city. And get this, there could be an even older vampire in the sarcophagus. An ancient super vampire. Right. Vampires. They're everywhere. You can't throw a rock in the city without hitting a vampire. It's the truth, Deb. The undead are all around us. We need to rise up and destroy our evil vampire overlords before it's too late. You heard him, folks. Gather up your crosses, garlic, and neck braces. Oh, brother. Well, Deb's not undead, but the sun will be up soon and she's dead tired. She's going home to get some hard-earned R&R. But don't worry. She'll be back same time, same station tomorrow night. Until then, fans, don't let the vampires bite.